in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Information Technology Multinational, Oracle, last month celebrated the 10th year of the fully digital high school, which it built in partnership with the Gauteng Department of Education. Skulk Burger tells us more. The Ponelo Pele Oracle Secondary School in Colfontaine Midrand is a no-fees school in the heart of the township and has 1,300 pupils and 60 staff. It serves as a model for community engagement and effective corporate social investment, Basic Education Minister Angie Mutshecha said in February. The 10-year anniversary event was attended by Oracle Executive VP Dorian Daly, Oracle South Africa MD Koliwa Makahliso and Minister Mutshecha, who was the Gauteng Education MEC when the project was initiated in 2003. The school opened its doors early in 2007. The school is supported by Oracle and its employees and executives volunteer their time to build the school and provide mentorship and coaching for the children. The school provides teaching of core, cultural and technical subjects, but does so with state-of-the-art equipment and the latest pedagogy with an emphasis on science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics. Oracle Executive VP Dorian Daly explains the driver behind Oracle's involvement. As individuals, we do the best that we can to influence others to embrace education and lifelong learning. But what is remarkable, and maybe even more impactful, is when large institutions and corporate entities partnering with governments step up to the plate and make education a part of their core mission. This is what Oracle is doing and has been doing for quite some time. It made a commitment to education. It is the cornerstone of our corporate philanthropic efforts. We seek to advance education with state-of-the-art technology. And each year, our educational initiatives serve more than 2.2 million students worldwide in almost 100 countries. In some cases, we are the instructors. But in so many more cases, we're supporting those who have dedicated their lives to education and to teaching. It's the right thing for us to do to better serve the communities in which we operate as a company and where our employees live. Because we believe education is a prerequisite to community stability, educational prosperity, and future innovation to tackle all those challenges that will inevitably face us in the future. And it's the right thing for us to do as a business. It just makes business sense to help develop the technical acumen and the creative confidence for students to succeed in the 21st century and to become the innovators of the future. Make no mistake about it, we want to tap into that talent pool. 2003. Conceived as an idea to develop minds, built on unpleasant grounds, a vision encrypted on rocks, watch it grow from bricks to blocks. A community of great wits and hands united, creating a nation that will stand not only by its two feet but with the same heartbeat. When Oracle met DOE, it was love at all sight. To conceive a child with a spirit of governance, corporate intelligence. In 2007, she was born. Her name, Bonolopelo Oracle. We adorn the mantra that we devour as we preach the future is ours. And today we celebrate. In 2013, the school produced the top metric pupil of the Gauteng province, which is also the smallest but most populous province in the country. Praise Ndebele is currently in his fourth year of actuarial sciences at the University of Cape Town. Minister Motshecha explains how the school, and specifically the quality of matriculants that it produces, such as praise, is helping to change the mindset of children in the townships about how education can change their lives. So as to really thank Oracle 
for more than a school, but for a community asset that you've built for our communities. Because we have an ongoing problem in terms of having, being able to eradicate the legacy of the past, both psychologically and in terms of resources. We find ourselves having to, struggling to get, to liberate African children, even mentally, to be the best that they could be. So that's why we came with, then he was a president, Kalima, was the president, was an acting president when we came to the school. But it really was such a liberating thing to have an African child being the top learner in the province. It was that fit even in terms of our need for social cohesion, for liberation, for all sorts of things. And really, he really, as I say, represented the aspirations and I think the concerns of many people. And for that, we remain quite grateful because we can say to all our children, it's not about race, it's not about where you come from, it's about making those right choices, you can make it. Other news making headlines this week, avenged to seek shareholder backing for sale of Krenica LTA stake to Katana in March, and new panel established to guide Harteng on infrastructure projects. Avenged will seek shareholder approval before the end of March for the sale of a 51% beneficial interest in Avenged Krenica LTA to Katana Construction, a black economic empowerment company. We're going to see a changing face of the sector in South Africa. Uh, so obviously it's been a process where, where we've been uh, heavily involved in for the last three years. And, and personally I'm very positive about the overarching results that we've achieved. Uh, I mean there's def different configurations that you can take and, and some of the other uh, construction companies has choose a different uh, way to comply uh, with the VRP conditions. Um, we have actually went on the process of transforming Granica for, for a number of uh, years. The problem that we were at substantial losses. We're at the point where we have uh, basically turned around Granica LTA and we are much better place to do a transaction where there's likelihood of future success. So um, we will go to shareholders in a month or so to get approval for that transaction. Um, we are doing it with Kutana, Kutana uh, construction. But also, we will include in that configuration a range of current contractors uh, um, in the shareholding structure. The Gauteng Provincial Government has established an economic advisory panel to advise it on the rollout of social and economic infrastructure projects planned for the next two years. Over the next two years, we and the mayors will work together. And I want to repeat the call I have made to the mayors that let's work together to fast track the rollout of infrastructure projects that have long-term benefits and that have been planned over a long period of time in the following areas. Firstly, in the area of public transport and logistics, we have projects that have long been planned. In the area of housing and human settlements, in the area of renewable energy and other energy projects, in the area of ICT and broadband, in the area of government precincts, including the Kopanong precinct, in the area of water and sanitation, in the area of health infrastructure, especially to ensure that there are community-based centers which must help to strengthen primary health care, to take care of all the vulnerable in our communities. That's Krimi Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.